Hello, my name is Catherine Bushnell and I am president of IASP. I'd like to send my greetings today uh, from all, everyone at ISP to all of you in Ecuador. I'd like to tell you a little about ISP and what we can do for you. So we are the International Association for the Study of Pain, IASP. Well, who are we? Well, we're comprised of more than 7,000 scientists, clinicians, healthcare providers, and policymakers across 125 countries. The Ecuadorian Society for the Study and Treatment of Pain is one of 96 national chapters of IASP. Membership in IASP and membership in the Ecuadorian Society are independent of each other, so joining one does not automatically make you a member of the other. The mission of IASP is to bring together scientists, clinicians, healthcare providers, and policymakers to stimulate and support the study of pain and to translate that knowledge into improved pain relief worldwide. So what does IESP do for our chapters and members in Ecuador and other parts of Latin America? Well, one resource that we have that's very important is PERC. It's the Pain Education Research Center. A PERC provides access to on-demand continuing education for pain professionals anytime, anywhere, at your convenience. One important part of PERC is that there's Spanish translation of much of our educational material. For example, the revised definition of pain. I won't try to say this in Spanish, so I'll just let you read it. But we also have things such as the, the COVID-19 and pain document that was published a couple of years ago and global year fact sheets. I'll tell you a little bit more about fact sheets in a minute. Another resource that we have are the IASP pain camps. Now, these camps are interprofessional residential educational events aimed at promoting interdisciplinary pain management by improving the knowledge and skills of young healthcare professionals in low and middle income countries. Uh, the first pain camp that we that we had was the Southeast Asian Pain Management Camp, and this, this has been going on for several years, and it's been highly successful in training young healthcare professionals across a number of countries in Southeast Asia. This year, for the first time, we had a Latin American pain camp that took place in Ecuador, and it was this summer, it was very successful, and we hope to have a um, uh, to continue this program and have more pain camps in Latin America in future years. Now, in addition to the pain camps, we have what we call pain schools. Pain schools are multidisciplinary and multi-professional educational events intended to promote the development of the next generation of basic science and clinical pain researchers. The very first pain school we had was the European Pain School, which has been going on for more than a decade. And next came the North American Pain School, NAPS. And then more recently, they started a pain school in Australia. And for the very first time in 2024, we will have a Latin American Pain School. Now this Latin American Pain School, uh, is going to take place in January in Santiago, Chile. So it's not too late to register if you are interested. Uh, the Pain School is a two-day theoretical and practical course that will focus on basic science and clinical topics related to acute and chronic pain with an interdisciplinary perspective and a distinct research orientation. Now, you must be a member of ISP to apply to the pain school, but if you do join ISP and apply, there are travel grants available to help with expenses. Now, another important research of ISP is, the, uh, is PAIN, which is our official ISP journal. The, most of you have probably heard of this journal. It is a peer-reviewed journal that provides a forum for the dissemination of multidisciplinary research in the basic and clinical sciences. It is the top rated pain journal, pain related journal, and it has an impact factor of more than 7.9. Now we also have a second online journal, 
open access journal uh, called Pain Reports. And this is the home of global research and emerging pain science, some emerging science that you wouldn't necessarily publish in pain. This would be the perfect uh, forum for publishing it. Uh, it's indexed in PubMed Central and just a a month ago, about a month ago, it finally re it received, it's a new journal, it received an impact factor, and, it, and its inaugural impact factor is 4.8, which is the second highest of all the pain-related journals. Another important resource that we have is called Pain Research Forum. Now, this is a forum for discuss, uh, fostering discussion and collaboration through uh, published papers of the week. Every week, uh, Greg publishes important pain-related papers from all sorts of journals, podcasts, webinars, community forums, and a correspondence program for young scientists and clinicians who want to learn more about communicating pain science. If you want to know more, learn more about it, look at on painresearchforum.org or go to the IESP website. Uh, it's a really very cool and important uh, resource that we provide. Now, I mentioned the global years before. Each year we have a, a global year that em emphasizes a different aspect of pain or pain management. And 2023 is the global year for integrative pain care. And the pain uh, global year materials include a series of, a series of fact sheets and several webinars. So some of the fact sheets, we have 12 fact sheets this year. Uh, some of them here are the, the developing an integrative pain care plan, traditional medicine practices across Asia, examples of non-Western approaches, acupuncture for pain relief. These are all translate, the fact sheets from all these different years are translated into Spanish and they're available to everybody, whether or not the person is an ISP member or, or not. So please go look on our website uh, and look at these fact sheets because they're, they're very, very important. Finally, I'd like to tell you a little bit about our World Congress. Every two years, we have a World Congress on pain. In 2022, it was in, um, in, in Toronto, Canada. And in 2024, in August, uh, we're going to have our World Congress in Amsterdam. I would love to see all of you at the meeting. If you come, please look me up. I'd, I'd like to meet you. Uh, I feel badly that I can't meet you today in person, and hopefully I can meet some of you in Amsterdam. So I'd like to thank you for inviting me to say a few words at your meeting, and please enjoy your meeting. Goodbye.